probably doesn't get any time off, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I am recording the meeting, just so you all know. Okay. There's it. I would call the meeting to order, and um, the one or two folks that will be joining will we can pick up. Uh, it's the first item on the agenda. First, I want to thank Chuck for uh, putting the agenda together and getting it out, getting the material out, supported by Lundner and, um, and Joanne and others. Thank you very much. Um, we have the minutes uh, of the December 4th meeting, which uh, you know have been prepared and posted in accordance with um, all the requirements. Do we have a motion to accept those minutes? I move it. Second. Second. Great, thank you very much. Next item is a review of the 2021-22 uh, budget. Um, we have, um, I think we'll turn it over to Linda and uh, Joanne, really just at a high level. The budget's important, um, morning Ed, the budget's important um, from uh, the audit committee standpoint, because it's really a, an important control feature, uh, both at the town and at the school, in terms of um, you know, understanding what's in the budget, but then also um, making sure the spending uh, coincides with what's in the budget and uh, sort of a, a way to look at whether the controls are working. Um, and it, it's helpful. It's not the only factor, but it's a helpful factor in the audit process. So I'll just turn it over to Lubner and take us through this um, at a, probably at a high level. Many of us are familiar with it. Sure. Um, I just have a couple of screens that I wanted to share with you. Can you see this? Yes, I can. So just by way of summary, the um, town council did approve the budget um, last week. Um, looking just, um, and I have your two years, so we could do a year over year. Our total property tax revenues slightly up, amount to be raised from tax <laughs> under a percent. But total revenues year over year are going from 147.7 to 148.9, which is about a 0.8% increase. Overall spending across um, all the units is going up 0.48%. And I listed here the individual items that, um, that, that, make up, that make up that number just on a high level. And I'll forward this document to you. Uh, the use of fund balance uh, that's budgeted for this year is 5.6 million down from the 6 million that you see in FY21. And this, just by way of explaining this number, when the budget was originally adopted, it was adopted with a 4.5 million budgeted fund balance drawdown. As you recall, we did a special appropriation of a little over 1.5 million for the Board of Ed COVID expenses which was to be used from fund balance. And so the revised uh, amended budgets with a fund balance took that to 6 million. Again, keep in mind, these are budgeted numbers. We typically, because of the way we budget, we budget for a 98 and a half collection rate. Our collection rate, including prior taxes, usually exceed what we budget for revenues. And we typically, through the various departments, we, uh, we tend to not spend 100% of the budget. And therefore, although we have the use of fund balance of a little over 6 million, our actual use of fund balance at the end of the year will not be $6 million. Uh, from what I'm understanding from the Board of Ed as well, just due to COVID, uh, they're looking at a considerable underspend this fiscal year, possibly somewhere around a million dollars or so. They will be asking for some of that in special appropriation this fiscal year, um, as you've heard. And, uh, but that tends to be the trend um, town-wide. And therefore, although the budgeted number is 6 million drawdown, I don't anticipate that number to be there. We'll probably be closer, if we do draw down any of the fund balance, um, probably a million and a half is what I'm projecting at this point, um, but we could possibly even break even. Uh, but we'll see, because we're seeing um, the trend in terms of revenues and spending. <coughs> Linda, quick, quick question, where, where it says uh, Board of Education expenses paid by the town? Yes. Well, that, that's obviously a significant uh, difference. <laughs> what, is, what is that? So again, I, I talked about, if you look at this 2 million number compared to the 555, yeah. 
This includes one and a half million of that special appropriation that was done this year. So that's why that number is up. Okay, we thank will you. Be doing, they will be requesting another special appropriation. So chances are that number, once we get that done, this 555 will probably align closer to this 2 million number. But this is a revised number after the special appropriation. All right, thank you. Um, and then on the revenue side, just looking at the grand list, our taxable grand list after appeals grew just under a percent from 7.73 uh, billion to 7.79. The amount to be raised from non non tax revenue is up from 8.7 million to 9 million. We had some numbers that went up, numbers that went down. This year, what the Board of Finance did was we looked at some of our special revenue funds and uh, try to see which one of those funds we could, swipe, we could sweep and bring into the general fund. And so this budget for FY22 includes a transfer of just over 700,000 in the police extra duty fund. Uh, that fund over time had accumulated um, an excess fund balance. Um, that fund pays for extra duty, but there's also an administrative component uh, that's included in that, in that number in the, in the invoice. And we haven't really moved any of that into the general fund. So this year, the Board of Finance is moving 700,000 or so into the general fund from that fund. So Linda, that's a one-time item though, right? Yes, that's a one-time item. Yeah. That's a one-time item this year. Now they may look at other funds next year. You know, this year we talked about, there's some funds in the movie fund there. Um, I think we looked at the movie fund and there's some other funds that they said, you know, we'll review those again next year. But right. that is your right, uh, Bill, that's one time. Has anybody taken a look at um, increasing revenue from, you know, non-tax, um, and I realize it's a small part of the whole, but um, increasing revenue from things other than taxes, you know, for, for example, fees for the swimming pool or, Whatever, I'm not, not suggesting that's the one, but have we looked at that or talked <coughs> revenue? Uh, you know, that yes, some of them um, may contribute. Has the town gone through that process? Yes, we do. We actually, it's actually required by charter that the Board of Selectmen uh, reviews fees um, annually. And therefore, this year and last year, Kevin has put great emphasis on doing that. And so this year, we did ask all the department heads, they each reviewed their fees and actually presented their, they presented fee memos that were sent to the Board of Finance, to the Board of Selectmen and, and Kevin, just to look at the fees that they charge when they were last reviews, uh, which ones can be, because there's some fees that we charge that are dictated by the state that we don't have control over. They're kind of just like a pass through, an example would be conveyance fees. But, um, but we did review those this year. We didn't make too many modifications this year just because of the times that we're in. Uh, this year, we're actually seeing a reduction in parking revenues uh, this year, and we project a slight reduction next year, right. just based on the commute activity. But we did review that. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, based on the brand list and, and the mill rate, uh, we're looking at a mill rate of 18.12. The final mill rate will be set by the Board of Finance in May. So these are estimates number. In May, the Board of Finance could change the amount to be raised uh, from taxation and they could also change the contribution from fund balance. They could also change the budgeted collection rate. So all of these numbers have the potential of impacting what the final mill rate will be in May. But for now, based on where things are, we're looking at a slight decrease in the mill rate, but that number will be finalized in May when the Board of Finance meets. And Linda, that's like a few years in a row where the mill rate has you're kind of stayed flat or gone down a little? Yeah, I believe last year and this year, uh, but when we had the, when we did the reval, uh, the grand list, uh, the mill rate did go up from 16 to 18. To right. Kind of up because we had a big, but since then it hasn't gone up. Right. Uh, and then just taking a look at the capital budget, um, this is a high level summary of, of the total capital budget. Break it, um, I broke it down between the town and the Board of Ed, and then on the Board of Ed just by the different facilities uh, that they have. And so this will, again, will get approved in May when the boards 
uh, approve the bonding resolutions. Uh, but as far as capital budgets, this is what we're looking at now. Um, this is FY21 is what was approved. 22 is the year that we're looking at, and then a uh, four year projection of what the requests are. Linda, what are the big capital uh, items in public works for, the, for 22 and that 16 million, the big ticket items? The big one there that's driving that is the police buildings. Um, right. There's seven and a half million in FY22 and seven and a half million in FY23. And so you see that it drops back down to kind of like yep. the normal 10 million in the subsequent years. But yeah, but you have 15 million between those two years. That's the driver. Thank you. Linda, the um, uh, library line, um, I think you're saying is about a two and a half million dollar annual operating budget, uh, but there's three million dollars in 22. Uh, what accounts for that three million? Right. So this is the capital budget, and therefore, if you add, including FY21, this is the ten million dollars for the library project. If you sum these four numbers up, and the way that it was put in the budget was kind of in installments of phases, but it is the $10 million for the library, a town's contribution towards the library. Are you saying that the $2.5 million a year is the library capital budget? Yeah, this is. Yeah. Well, this, 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 is, is this is the CapEx and, and the, the library ongoing expenses is just in the expenses up above, I think. Right. Yes. Mm. <coughs> this is the $10 million CapEx that... They're, add, they're additive, George. It's a it's a ten million dollar contribution by the town, which is two million and twenty one and eight million in the five following years, um, and then a, um, a two and a half million dollar um, commitment onto operating cost each year, you know, probably with some agreement um, as to either cap it or add to it, which we have which we haven't. I'm not sure it's drafted yet. We haven't seen yet, but. That's a different question. If, if you, yeah, yeah, okay. Are the road repairs in the uh, in the public works line? Yes. Uh, well, the the answer to that question was yes, but um, let, me, let me ask a sort of a, a related question. The gas company's paying for a question is, is the gas company not paying for a fair amount of that? And to that extent, would that be in these numbers or is that separate? No, that would be separate. So the repairs that are done by, by the gas company, you know, when they dig up, they come back and they, they fix those. So these are independent of those number, of those repairs. And but, but if they, they paid the entire, <laughs> if they paid the entire road, that's, that's also uh, just to be clear, so they, it's digging up, repairing, but then also repaving, yeah. repaving that road. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Under the uh, uh, board of that high school, the uh, three million eight. What comprises that? This is a big chunk of that is a new roof. Um, I believe we have about two million dollars of that for for the roof. Um, I can get to the line item for the board of that. I just summarized the totals, uh, but I do have the line item detail for each of those projects that make up that number. Oh. I'm surprised to see the new roof after spending $60 million on the high school. Yeah. Lunda, I've got one more question about the roads. The sure. does that do the costs I see on here represent not having them sort of repaired to the state they're in after the water company or gas company leaves? Does that include resurfacing this road? I mean, resurfacing the roads and getting them back to where they were ten years ago, five years ago. Yes, so included in the public works numbers, you know, you have the roads, you have the various uh, facilities. You have, um, you know, suites for the highway, if there are any vehicles that are due to be replaced, all of that is included. But specifically on the roads, yes, some of it is um, maintenance of the roads 
and some of it is um, our other public works items, bridge repairs and so forth. What I'm really looking which for- Which get reimbursed by the state. Yeah, what, what I'm really looking for probably is a person that's only in a small way involved with the town, but those people, you know, if, if 50 people in town know I'm on the audit committee, 40 of them have told me that our roads are absolutely unacceptable. And I just have not quite heard, are we going to return them? Uh, uh, if, you, if you drive around on many of the roads, I mean, all you do is they rattle and bang, even though they look repaired. I mean, are, is, does, is the town got a budget to put those back or, or on many of these roads, are we done? And I can address that. So our, our agreement with the gas company was that the roads remain open for three years because people have three years to hook up and then there's a moratorium after that. So the patches that they do are temporary patches, um, except the state came in after 18 months and redid South Avenue and 106. So, so, um, but the deal with, with the gas company is if the road had to be repaired anyway, it's on the town. If the town had done it in the last five or 10 years, it's on them. So uh, Tiger has a road by road analysis as to which ones they owe us for and which ones the, the town was going to do anyway, but we delayed it because, uh, because the gas pi pipeline was coming in. So uh, Tiger has a list of, of, of roads and uh, but most of the roads downtown are still open because but another factor is they lost last year because of COVID. They, they had to defer all their hookups last year. So we're sort of off schedule on, on, the, on the gas hookups. Um, but the roads will be will be paved this year, next year, and the following year based upon the, the agreement we have about keeping. Them <coughs> okay, well, it's not the audit committee's job to to work, to 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 make decisions about how the roads. I just want to know whether the roads were in here. It sounds like yes, they are. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, Thank and, you. and 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 EverSource will probably reimburse us a million to two million dollars for their portion of, of of the cost. Good. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, push forward because I know that uh, um, one or two member, one or two folks on the call have a hard stop uh, a little bit later on. So, um, Linda, what else do you want to cover here? So, um, I think that's really it as far as as far as the budget um, is concerned. Okay, and how about um, should we? Is Joanne going to contribute on this as well, or how, how do we set that up? Jo Joanne, I don't you see Dr. Keating. I don't have Dr. Keating. I saw our town join, but I didn't see the board. Yeah, this is school vacation week, uh, Bill. Yeah, I, I think that might be the case. Yep. Schools are closed. <laughs> okay. The only question, and the only question I really had, just explain to us. Uh, I, I, for, first of all, I, I, I should, should have said earlier that um, I think there's a really very robust process that takes place around the budget, and that probably everybody on this phone call would have a different number, some higher, some lower. But um, I, you know, I want to congratulate the other committees and Kevin for your leadership. There's a, a good process around the budget. Um, and I particularly want to call out the Finance Committee for the work that they're doing in this area. I, I know that this is not easy. And um, also, um, I want to just take the opportunity to remind everybody that even though the mill rate's down, um, the, the state has plans for us as well. So. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean taxes will be down, but but Linda, where did uh, where did um, the the whole question wind up around healthcare between the board and Ed and the town whose books that were going to be on you know, because of COVID? You, you, I know uh, you the board of finance, it. sure. Uh, the board of finance and the board of Ed are still uh, working working on that. Um, the the COVID related items on the internal service at this point were not part of the budget. Of the approved budget, they're going to be handled by way of special appropriation, as was done last year. And um, I believe there may be some action on that either uh, during the April May timeframe for um, and that inclusion would, of the next fiscal year by way of special appropriation. Yeah, and that would even be with respect to um, um, the health care <clears throat> that has been deferred because of COVID. That might that you know, actuarially might be doubled up in 2022 and 23, right? Correct. And so one of the, the approach that the Board of Finance um, took was let's, let's kind of wait and see. These are projections to see 
what actually ends up ends up happening. Um, you know, there's some federal monies that are coming down and make a determination what could be used for that. And so the hope is a lot of the federal money that comes down could possibly offset those expenses and we may not have to dip into the town's fund balance for that. So we're kind of evaluating um, the revenue that's coming in and those expenses as they occur. Great, good. So Chuck, should we move to item three? Oh uh, yeah, did you have anything else here? Um, yeah, item three, which would be the debt related stuff. So yeah, I think that'd be good. Well, no, let's do that. That's Lunda too, I think. Oh, the bond, the bond. Okay, sure. So real quick, um, you know, we did a refunding, and this is kind of where the town stands as far as our outstanding geo. The 2021 number is as as of April, which includes the new monies that were that were financed. So we're actually now, uh, for the first time in a while, under a hundred million dollars in total outstanding geo. Uh, we do have a couple of payments that are to be made between now and June. And therefore, when we close out the year and we present you audited final numbers for the GO, we will see a decrease in that total outstanding debt by, by June 30. However, as we mentioned before, we are still talking about not included in these numbers are the library and the police building and so forth. So we do have some major projects ahead of us, but for the projects that we are currently holding, we are steadily uh, reducing that outstanding outstanding debt number and also doing things like taking advantage of refinancing um, some of these existing debt uh, that were issued at higher interest rates to take advantage of some of those geo savings. So this is a very good trend. There's a very good trend line, no question about it in terms, are we still the, do we still have the highest debt per capita uh, in the state? I know we did a year or two ago. Do you, do you know that? I don't know that, but I can look, I can, it, yeah. Bill, that's and, probably the case. Say it again. Kevin. That's probably that's probably true. That's probably still true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keep on. We're probably the highest average mortgage in the state too. The highest average. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Great. <coughs> the the trend, trend line, I hope, I hope Chairman. I, chair, I hope, trend yeah. line for the last uh, since 2018 has uh, been very very favorable. Uh, it's clearly going to go the other way, but. We all know, I think the police station, whatever form it's going to take, is long overdue. The library uh, is a commitment the town has made. And, uh, you know, both of those, I guess, are sort of projects for the next hundred years. And uh, once we're through that, one would like to see it start to trend down again. I think that's uh, what we should see. It's disappointing. I thought they were going to fund the library out of the way, the way it was presented out of operations, but I guess not. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. So the, but also we should call out the. Um, uh, we will once again reaffirm with the highest credit rating. Um, you know, um, by Moody's, I guess. So that you know, again, congratulations to the town. Yes, um, and that really, you know, helped serve, serves us well. When we did this most recent refunding of about five million dollars, our true interest dropped from. 1.9 to over to just about 1%. Okay. Um, and we're looking for some additional refunding opportunities as well, just to provide some relief on the debt service expenses. I've never been a, um, I've never actually um, done credit ratings, but uh, it always interests me how we can have the highest credit rating when we have the highest debt per capita, but you know, it's not my business and I don't have any special, special specialty in that area there, but um, just an interesting point. So, anyway, uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Did, you have, did maybe, you have anything else? Done on this? No, I'm done. I think we can move on to the next item. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the next item is the I'm stop sharing. Is the internal audit? I'm sorry, the, the independent audit. And um, you know, I think that um, given where we are, you know, still remote, the remote access, uh, the COVID environment, uh, um, uh, we, we should have a discussion here. But we, uh, we had asked the uh, outside auditors to uh, put forth a fee proposal for them to remain, uh, to remain as the auditors. And I think the audit committee, um, at least I would like to seek approval of recommending P PKF 
uh, to the town council later in the month uh, to do the audit for the uh, for the ensuing year. Their fees this past year were 86.5. Um, they um, are recommending um, or asking for 88.5 for fiscal year 2021, which um, given the amount of work they, they're doing and so on, you know, I, I personally, um, I know that Linda's probably been through it, but I personally think it's reasonable. And um, so um, I'd like to just open that up for discussion to see if, um, uh, either the committee members or anybody else has any uh, observations or questions on that. I know that I know that it's customary in towns for periodically to go out for you know competitive bid, but given the COVID environment, I don't think that's healthy for us. <coughs> um, I'm, I'm not particularly sure that uh, it's a process we have to follow over a period of time, but doesn't always necessarily render the best results. So, um, so I so there's a. Proposal on the table it was in the minutes that the audit committee recommend PKF be the auditors for the ensuing year, and the fee increase goes from eighty six five to eighty eight five, an increase of two thousand dollars. I support that, Chairman. Thank you. I support that. Thank you. I'm in favor. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll recommend that, Kevin. You and I can chat about that uh, how we proceed, um, but that would be the recommendation of the. Audit. I'll, I'll give you a call over the next couple of days. On the internal audit, moving to item five, um, um, you know, we have a we have a we have not engaged an outside audit in, an outside firm to do an internal audit, and uh, we're suggesting we, the audit committee, is suggesting that we not do that again for the current year, but that to the extent there are special projects or things that we need done that as long as, um, as long as we define them in a way that that does not impair the independence of PKF, we ask PKF to do that. While we have in the budget 75,000, I think we would like to try to work towards keeping that down to 50,000. But then uh, work with Kevin and with Lundner and with the Board of Ed to go out um, for a proper proposal to bring an outside firm into the internal budget after the next fiscal year. And, um, you know, I think that would both help from a budgetary pressure standpoint. I think that would give us uh, the necessary internal audit coverage we have under the, under the charter and other documents and uh, also be responsive to the COVID environment where, um, you know, a lot of things are being done remotely. There are a couple of areas we'd like uh, PKF to look at, but um, I, think we can, I think we can get by with this reduced schedule. So I'll stop there and ask anybody on the call if they have any comments or recommendations or disagree. Yeah, well, one, one, one question I had, I guess, for, for Lunda maybe, or, or Joanne. Um, with respect to the uh, COVID expenses being funded uh, as needed, let's say, or as required, what, do you envision any, um, any need for any review of, of those expenses? No, not at this time. I mean, they will be reviewed through the course of the audits, just like all the other expenses. Uh, what we did on the town side and <clears throat> the board of ed side as well, we created specific COVID accounts so we could track these COVID expenses so we can report against them and therefore we're <clears throat> able to make that determination. And if we needed to pull those particular expenses out, if, for example, Joe wanted to kind of dig, drill down into those expenses, We've identified those uh, through the use of these individual specific accounts for that. And that's how we track them as well for federal reimbursement. Chuck, it might be helpful to understand that, you know, <coughs> expenses for the schools are really, for example, um, half a million dollars for permanent substitutes, um, extra expense for custodians and cleaning, the kind of things that to somewhat are actually offset by the savings from have not having some, uh, programs that are being deferred so and plus the federal grants that are coming so, so the board of finance is, is is delaying action on this so they can actually look at what the proposed expenses are what the grants are that, that are coming what the expected savings are based upon <coughs> the change in operation so it's kind of a complex picture but the board of finance is focusing on that i have one little concern and that's the uh, plan to use the uh, external auditors to do 
the internal uh, auditing function. Uh, I have a little concern about conflict of interest there, and uh, I would make sure that we monitor that very carefully and perhaps have personnel not involved in the audit to do the uh, uh, internal audit. Good, good, point, um, good point, George. Um, <coughs> Joe, I know you had to leave early. If you're still with us, um, you'll keep that in mind as we as we go through this, and uh, maybe some of the areas we can pick, we can be mindful of that. Yes, that, that'd be no problem. We can use a different team to do those procedures, unless they're uh, if they're an extension kind of of something we're looking at anyway. Whatever, depending on the areas that you pick, I might use the same team because it's just kind of expanding the scope. But if it's something more uh, you know, separate outside the scope, then we can definitely bring in a different team to, to do that work. Bill, Bill, a good practice that I've used elsewhere is if you have something that's other than usual, have PKF write your letter saying that they've reviewed it and it does not impair their independence from a professional point of view. So you at least got that covered. Good. I, I agree with that. So this is uh, you know, not a long-term approach, but a short-term approach. It helps a little bit from a budgetary standpoint. It keeps the controls in place, keeps the internal order function in place, but also gives us time to go out and, and um, restart up that internal audit um, for, the, for the ensuing uh, calendar year. Gives us time to go through the proposal process, scope it out properly and so on. Okay, um, with that, then I'm going to Unless there are other questions, I'm going to really push through. Um, the, there shouldn't be a lot here, but we had um, the monthly financial statements. Um, <coughs> I don't think Joe, Dr. Keating is with us. So, um, Linda, maybe you could just. Um, she might be. Are you here, Joanne? So I think that's Joanne Noon. Oh, that's Joanne Noon. Okay. I'm sorry. So, well, why don't you just um, take us uh, take us to where we are relative to this? Uh, for both the town and the board event, I'm positive you can cover both. <clears throat> sure. So I did share, I did send out with you, um, to you, the monthly financials um, as of February. Um, we are where we anticipated we would be. Total revenues were about 97% year to date, which is consistent with, with trends. And then on the expense side, where we were at about 60% again year to date which is consistent with trend. Um, earlier, remember when we were talking about the use of fund balance, although we have the $6 million as a budgeted fund balance drawdown, based on these trends, I don't anticipate uh, that happening. I will share one slide here. Can you see this? Yes. Debt. Okay. Um, it's a debt. It's, yeah, okay. There we go. So this is just looking at, you know, there were, some, there were questions about when we did the tax deferral and, and how does it compare. So this is something that um, the tax collector and I have started to monitor just to kind of see where we are in terms of tax collections relative to budget. So we're just looking at same periods over time beginning, we started doing this in, in October. But you can see that of the total budget of 138.6 million in 2020, of 139 million, by February, we were at 138, which is about 99%. And so I do the same for the same period to the end. And so you can see that as of April, and she gave this to me this week, um, we are consistent with our collection rate. We're already above 100%, 102% uh, of total taxes. This does include back taxes as part of this collection. Um, and therefore, we're perfectly fine in terms of, of collections. And maybe this is something that the Board of Finance may want to look at when this may be a little this may be a, a little bit unfair be, you know in the sense of it's a detailed question but how do um the commercial real estate you know given COVID given some of the closures I realize it's the the, the uh, storefronts are owned many in many respects by uh, landlords but um <clears throat> is there any um concern or thinking in the area of commercial tax revenue number one and then a, a second question I would have um, in terms of the project that's, I forget the name of it, but going up sort of uh, behind the old post office, behind St. Aloysius Church. Uh, that, yeah. Um, is that fully on stream at this point from a tax standpoint or do, or do they still have a tax holiday? 
they're, <laughs> they're, gradu they're gradually getting on. Um, and from my discussion with Sebi, there, there are four units, um, each at different phases of completion. I believe the first one, the one that's most complete is about 70%, and therefore you get taxes based on the completion rate. The second building is at about 50%. And then the third and fourth are both below 20% completion in terms of tax, um, from a tax revenue standpoint. And this was as I think, a, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that, Linda, because the uh, both of the apartment complexes have had their COEs issued and they're being occupied. There's like 90% occupancy in, in the apartments, and the, the condos are assessed based upon completion rates. And I think it's much higher than that as well. So. Okay, I'll double check with, with Ms. Yeah, no, I just, um, uh, <clears throat> sort of a continuing question I've had in terms of the um, revenue coming in from projects of that nature, given the, the given the, the uh, cost burden on the, on the town, the school system. Um, I'm, I'm not being at all critical of, um, you know, what's been done in the past, but really understanding that to, to, uh, as we look forward to the future. Uh, so that, that's fine. I think that's an answer. We can take a look at that separately. Yeah. No, there's no indication yet that there's there's a net increase in the uh, in the kids in the uh, in the view complex uh, versus what were there before when there were 38 units. So that's good. Yeah, that was going to ask you that. That that's yeah. good. That's, uh, is that something we can we can <coughs> monitor? Is that something we can monitor, or is that something? Uh, well, it, you know, it seems that the the uh, the people that are moving in there are, are seniors or people from New York City that don't have ch uh, school aged children yet. So, it's it's surprising how quickly the apartments have 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 rented up within a year. Yeah, and condos are expensive, and um, you know, people anybody's going to spend two or three million dollars for a condo is probably more like with a family more likely is going to buy a single family home. So, yeah, yeah that's probably true. Yeah. And the, and the commercial real estate, um, I mean, I guess from a tax revenue standpoint, it in some respects doesn't impact the town unless they, um, I mean, that, right, right, because it's on assessed value. So I guess it's the next time an assessment comes up. Is that, is that correct? Correct. As of, um, as of October of each year for the following budget year. Yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of pressure on the landlords, I'm sure, but unfortunate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Even in escrow, though, Bill, the, the, the commercial transactions that are occurring are, are remarkably high. Is that right? For example, the the the, um, the Pine Street building that uh, was bought for four and a half million just sold for more, more than five million dollars. So the, the the commercial values are, are holding up very strongly. Oh, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of development activity going on in town. A lot of a lot of uh, proposed development. So, oh, that's terrific. Yeah, that, that's good. I guess maybe. Um... Re re retail is suffering. I mean, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the one weakness that everybody has, and we're doing better compared to Westport and Wilton and our yeah. neighbor Greenwich. Um, you know, retail is the one area that's very soft, but otherwise, our commercial, uh, our commercial businesses and, and things in town are very strong. Probably a little bit less about COVID and a little bit more about just the transformation of the country, right? Amazon, <clears throat> Amazon, and exactly, yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, the, the whole idea. I, I know that. <clears throat> I know that the business council has had um, chambers had, you know, buy local and it's important to do that. Yeah. You know. Restaurants are very, very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Probably out of line, but uh, given the problems of the real, of uh, the uh, uh, realty, uh, excuse me, is there any chance of maybe a, a, a tax holiday or a, a reduction of taxes for those uh, small businesses that are suffering and uh, all of the empty spaces still in town. Uh, we're, we're, not allowed, we're not allowed to do it under state law, you know, oh, really? what the state allows us to do. So we've looked at that. There's a, there's a, there's a legislation pending that would uh, allow us to have a separate mill rate for, for commercial <coughs> businesses versus residential. But that probably would, the, the plan landlords would, that would suffer, but even the landlords don't, you know, the, the the values are holding up. Right. And I don't think when they were talking about a, a separate mill rate, they were thinking about decreasing anybody's mill rate probably, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> that could work both ways. Maybe, maybe they were. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, worth, it's, probably worth, it's probably worth commenting on for the businesses, the Jordan's comment, 
the ability of most small businesses to get PPP loans over the last year or get two of them has been actually quite amazing. Mm. And even, even minimally competent people, if they've got a decent bank and have been able to get those. I mean, I mean, my, my wife, my wife's own business, she's gotten two of them for, I don't know, a quarter million dollars each. I mean, it's been, and they're, they're, they both get forgiven. And I, and I talked to a number of the small uh, uh, retailers in town and many of them have gotten them. Some kind of look at you and say, you know, PPP loan. So it's unfortunate some people do not understand it, but there's money to help a lot of small businesses out there if they're smart enough to go look for it. Right. Good. So uh, the other, we're now at the point, um, I believe, um, of other matters, or did we, uh, uh, and on other matters, uh, Kevin, could you just um, maybe say two or three things as to, you know, there's been a lot written about the state changing the, the, the um, uh, tax rates and uh, pu putting, uh, putting a tax on the towns, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it. Uh, is there um, it, it, just sort of how do you look at all of this? From well, the mansion tax is is is, is apparently dead. It, it was Senator Looney's idea. The, right. First, the governor is very much against any new taxes, so I think that's that's keeping a lid on the uh, legislative proposals. But also, the governor perhaps would veto some things that are still in the pipeline. He, he's very he's very strong about no no new taxes. And and Kevin, what what what's the current reading on this notion of? <clears throat> sort of managing the schools, consolidating districts from a state point of view? I think the pressure on that is off. Um, and they're talking about incentives as opposed to sticks. So good. Uh, but I think the governor, I, I think I'm just, there's some crazy zoning proposals that hopefully will <clears throat> not come out in the form that they're being proposed and the governor's uh, perhaps weighing in on those as well. Good. Well, each of us has their own opinion. I was not in favor of Lamont when he ran. Actually, I'm quite pleased with him. I agree. Uh, you know, he's he's done. A, his his staff is fabulous. He's got great people around him, and he's doing on COVID especially. He's doing a great job. I think so. That's the key: getting competent people in the right places, isn't it? Excellent. And it also helps to get ten billion dollars from the federal government. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just have to pay for that somehow, <laughs> all of us. The other side of that coin is, is what you're going to pay in federal income taxes, so. Yeah, that's uh, right. Let's not go there. <laughs> okay, great. Um, Lunder, anything, um, Chuck, anything else you want to cover? No, I don't think so. Uh, everybody, just just to mention, right, there there was a process in place to, to, to file this, uh, was a popular annual report and through some discussions and thinking, I think uh, Lunda decided that, um, you know, maybe it wasn't the right place to devote our resources and, and maybe, um, you know, do some other. So bottom line is it was not uh, done this year, even though it was done in earlier years. And Lunda, I don't know if you have any more to add on that, but. Uh, yes, um, and I did talk to, and Joe's off the call now, but I did have a discussion with Joe and um, I think our thoughts and just based on feedback I heard from you in lieu of doing the PAFR, beef up the MDNA in, in the audit. And we could accomplish much of the same thing. So we've talked about being more graphical, using charts to kind of explain trends and whatnot. So I think we could do that and accomplish just as much. And then we could even publish the MDNA just as a standalone document as an executive summary for folks that want to get a better understanding and it doesn't, we don't duplicate the effort and the work. Yeah, and, I, and I think there are the discussions we've had is to try to draft, you know, the MDNA maybe a little bit in advance and have more time to comment on it and, you know, look at it and, and so on, rather than have it come late in the process. Yeah, I, I like, um, Lynn, I like that suggestion around the MDNA and also publishing that because, um, you know, um, to the extent we can ha have the same report out there, so to speak, or be repetitive, I think that's a real plus and probably reduces workload as well. Well, look, with that, um, Bill, 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 I didn't know. It may, it, maybe you mentioned it earlier, but I don't know if mention was made of the GFOA OA award on the budget. So I didn't. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't mention to that, but <clears throat> other than to say, I mean, I did. I did call out all of the committees. Um, 
Kevin and, and you as well in terms of all the great work you're doing around the budgetary process, but Lunder in particular for, um, uh, you know, really the position he's helped put the town in, in terms of all of these special awards and reports and, um, and also you know, working very cooperatively with the audit committee. So we, um, you know, we're on a public, I know we're on a public recorded line, but at the same time where we feel very positive about where CFO is and the town is and working with the board of education as well. And, but also uh, the budgetary process led by the finance committee, uh, they're doing a real good job and we encourage them to keep it up. <laughs> Great. With that, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So move. So move. move. Second. Sounds like we're in the unanimous agreement. Thanks all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you all.